Let's proceed with principles and characteristics of good speech. James H. McBurney and Ernest J. Rage define speech as the communication of ideas and feelings by means of visible and audible symbols originating in the speaker. So, whether speech be private or public, original and interpretative, it is all oral communication, dealing with thoughts, ideas, employing symbols, sounds, words, inflections, and even gestures. Therefore, skill in using these symbols is important for the speaker's ideas to get through to the listener and for the listener to interpret the ideas coming his way. Now, when is speech good? Critics have many sen in many centuries formulated this criteria to determine when speech is good. Generally, the criteria used by people in judging when speech is good are the following. First, the nature of the response. So meaning by the results of the speech on the listener. Second, the soundness of the speaker's position. So by the truth of the speech. Third, the motives and intentions of the speaker. Fourth, the principles of the art of good speech. Now, the audience response is not always a reliable gauge of the speaker's effectiveness, nor is the result the sole consideration in determining the speaker's success. A good speaker may fail to get the results he wants. A poor speaker may win favorable results in, in spite of his weaknesses. For instance, a speaker may get good results not because of his speech but because of his popularity or because he has made promises or reward to those who would buy his products or espouse his cause. So, pwede na siya mahitabo. Not all who tell the truth are believed to be sound speakers. Not all who sound truthful and sincere tell the truth although listeners naturally seek the best possible formula. Now, McBurney and Rage give 10 principles of good speech. Number one, good speech is socially responsible. What does it mean? The socially responsible speaker must constantly respect facts and be aware of sound reasoning and judgments. He should see to it that his speech is in context with his social milieu guided by intelligence and prudence for he is answerable for the end of his speech second good speech reveals a speaker with good personal qualifications so almost always the speaker with strong personal qualifications is in the best position to win the respect of the listeners the listener's attitudes towards the speaker are influenced by the personal qualifications of the speaker. Mind you, this is very um, popular. No, so usahay dili tamamina, especially if we know the speaker and um, we know also the topic. So dili na mo mamina, okay? Ay, di man siya qualified. So nanong mamina man ko niya. Okay. Then third, good speech is directed to serve a specific purpose. So we have discussed that a speech should have at one purpose. Okay, so it should be specific. Whatever response the speaker aims is at the is the objective toward which he addresses his efforts. A purposeless speech meanders aimlessly. So bisag asara na mo 
but the purposiveness of a speech forces the speaker to follow a course to attain his aim. Fourth, good speech deals with worthwhile subjects. So the best resources of both speaker and audience are to be tapped. What the speaker communicates, like events, experiences, projects, proposals, even aspirations, joys, sorrows, and problems affect the level and quality of speech. Five, good speech is based on the best available materials. So, a substantial speech is inclined to attract and hold the attention of the listener. For it definitely arms and equips the speaker with more confidence as he goes through the process of communicating his ideas, thoughts, feelings, and even sentiments. Research and interviews are helpful adjuncts in the preparation of a speech. Next, good speech is analytical. Now, analytical speech gives full right to the setting, which comprises the subject, the audience, the occasion, and the speaker. Outlining the speech lends to lucid analysis, which comes to perfection as the speaker delivers his piece. Seventh, good speech is based on sound method. The speaker's method, his approaches, and plan are prescribed by the purpose and by his analysis of the situation. And necessary digressions mar a speech. Planning a speech improves the delivery and leads to effective communication. Next, good speech aims the attention and interest of the listener. Without the attention, there is no effective communication. It is imperative, therefore, that audience interest is engaged. So, what na gani na namino na yung audience? Maningkamot ka, speaker, na mubalik na sila mamati ni mo. Next, good speech makes effective use of voice and bodily action. So, voice and bodily action produces symbols which convey the speech and to which the audience reacts. A well-modulated voice, devoid of harshness, hoarseness, and shrill qualities, and spontaneous but controlled bodily movement convey meanings and lend to effective, even sensitive, communication. And then the last one, good speech uses good diction, language, and style. Words carefully selected and arranged and which are correctly pronounced are part of the speaker's diction and style. The language one uses, revelatory for a speaker's personality, is an essential element in effective oral discourse. Let's talk about importance of a good speech. Okay, so speech has great power. It can steer people to mutiny or it can create spirit. It can turn an adverse situation into a friendly one or it can turn a friendly gathering to a hostile move. And it can build tension and it can relax tension. So you see, if you deliver uh, not a good speech so instead nga ma-inspire ang imong audience so ma depress na noon sila or um, magkagubot na noon things like that let's move on to importance of good speech in employees Good speech habits may be considered soft skills in the marketplace, but employee speech habits can help or harm companies. Let's talk about company prestige first. Slang, street talk, and bad grammar can give clients the impression that you are not a professional organization. 
even with employees who do not have much contact with the clients, you may give that employee's co-worker the impression that you do not intend to maintain a professional atmosphere. This can foster laxness in the workplace and that laxness may become poor performance and ultimately poor customer service. The use of coarse curse words and vulgar language creates an environment that some employees could claim is objectionable and could even make you vulnerable to sexual harassment charges for allowing that language. Next is effective relay in, of information. Employees must be able to convey instructions, orders, and guidelines to other employees in a clear and concise manner. If someone, someone speaks casually or uses slang, that communication can be misunderstood and an essential task may be overlooked or performed in a manner contrary to your wishes. In addition, if an employee is requesting information and that request is garbled or stated in hard-to-understand language, the information given may not be what the employee really wanted. Then, understanding oral instructions. The ability to speak well is related to the ability to listen well, according to bettersoftskills.com. Employees who cannot listen well cannot perform well because many instructions are relayed by managers verbally. Now, if an employee has poor listening skills, your business can experience a breakdown in communication that can cause improperly filled orders, delayed repairs, mishandled products during shipping, and misuse safety equipment. Another importance of good speech in employees is conflict resolution. When you must step in to resolve employee conflicts or address employee complaints, it is important that the employee be able to articulate the objections being raised. You cannot solve problems you don't understand. Good speech skills are vital to resolving workplace issues and employees who can explain their positions can help you improve the work environment by putting out areas that need improvement. In addition, conflicts may be avoided in the first place if employees can express their needs and concerns clearly and effectively to each other. Then, handling an existing employee's speech problems. A place to handle speech and language problems is in the interview. Screen out employees whose speech habits do not fit in your standards. If you find you already have an employee on staff whose speech is detrimental to the workplace, Meet with the employee to discuss acceptable language in your place of business and perhaps suggest some language classes at a local community college. Okay, thanks for watching. If you have questions, you can just send me a message. Bye!